Welcome back everybody to part 16a of our Unity Beginners tutorial series. For this video, you will need to download the character Death Sprite Sheet from the link in the description below. And this video is all about you guys. Thank you very much for getting in touch with us with your requests on social media. We're going to address them head on, starting with player death animations and using scene additives. Let's crack on. Top of our list today is how to create a player death animation as requested by Garin on Twitter. Thank you, Garin. First, please import and prepare your character death sprite sheet and create your player death sprites. Use those then to create a simple death animation that looks like this. If you need help or a reminder on how to do this, please refer to the previous video, part 15, death animations. Then, when you are satisfied, let's open up our animator and work on our transition. We want to be able to transition into our player death animation from any of our animation states. And to do that, we're going to use the node any state. So reposition your hierarchy just a little bit to make some space. I'm going to put any state at the top there, just here, with our player death animation node just below. First, we are going to want to set a parameter that's going to tell us when to play our death animation. And to do that, we will do exactly like we did with our enemies by creating a ball and we'll call it dead. There we are. Then from any state, right click, make transition into player death, click on our transition, turn off fixed duration and turn off can transition to. Then under conditions, let's add our parameter of dead and of course if dead is true play death animation then when we respawn we will go back to our idle state so let's create a transition from player death down to idle click on the transition turn off has exit time and fix duration add our condition once again that will be dead and of course this will be false with that all set, let's open up our player controller script. In our player controller script, first let's lay down some variables in order to make our def animation work as desired. First, we're going to create two balls. So underneath where we have airtime counter, type in private bool control active, as we want to be able to control when our players can control the character as we don't want to be able to move and jump as our death animation is taking place. That will look really awkward and will cause all sorts of complications. Then create the second private bool that will of course be is dead for our animator's parameter. And when our player death animation is running, just like our enemies, we want him to fall through the floor, through the level and into oblivion. So underneath, let's create a private variable that will be the collider 2d and we'll call it player collider as we want to turn off the collider to make him fall and any of the child game objects associated with our player such as the stomper and the ground checker to do this underneath we will write a public then game object with a capital g followed by square brackets at the end this creates what's called an array now an array allows us to store multiple objects as a single variable. It's really handy stuff. And we'll call this the child OBJs. There we go. And for added effect, let's have our player bounce in the air in shock when he dies. And to do that, underneath, we will create a public float and we'll call it shock force. There we are. Those are our variables. Let's work on our function. First, the start function, where we will create a reference to the player collider. So the player call equals get component collider 2D. There we go. And we also want to say at the bottom that control active equals true. Now at the minute, nothing will happen if control active is true because we haven't set a statement for that. Let's go to our fixed update and punch that in. And we will do that above our move player and jump function. So let's open up our if statement. So if control active is 
equal to, using two symbols, true, then we want to be able to move our player and jump, so copy and paste those into there and delete those two functions. Then let's work on our player def function, which we will open up just below our on trigger enter 2D. So let's go void player def and let's punch stuff in. The player def function is going to perform a number of things. So first, let's get the obvious out of the way. When player def is called, is dead equals true. And if dead is true, we can now call upon the animator dot set bool and in the brackets the name of our dead parameter and a comma and the value of our bool. So if a bool is true, it sets the bool in the parameter and plays our def animation. And while that's taking place, we of course will want to say that control active is equal to false. So we can no longer move and interact with our player. We also want to disable our player collider. So the player collider dot enabled is false and the child game objects in our array. And to do that, we're gonna use what's called a for each loop. To write a for each loop underneath, let's open with just that, for each. And what do we want to say? Well, we wanna say for each game object, and we will give these a name, let's call them child. So for each child game object that is in our game object array, which we've called child objs. So we will loop through and find every game object in our child game object array, and we'll give them the name of child. What's going to happen once it's done that? Well, we want to set all the game objects in our child object array to false, and they're all defined as child. So child dot set active, then in the brackets, false. So that will deactivate all the game objects in our array, which will be the stomper and our ground checker. We've also set the value of shock force for some extra effect. So let's put that into action. And like we did with the enemies, we're gonna say that the rb2d dot add force, then in the brackets, our direction, our vector two, which will be transform dot up, multiplied by our variable shock force, and our force mode 2D will be force mode 2D dot impulse. There we go. But there's a little extra thing we have to do with this. For as it stands, the gravity in our player is relatively strong. It's set at five, but we want this to be quite a floaty effect. And we can actually alter the gravity scale while this happens. To do that, just above, type in the RB2D, so our rigid body, dot gravity scale, so we can adjust the scale of gravity, is equal to, and we'll say half of what it is now, which is 2.5F. There we go. But there is one more thing we need to do. We want to also create a separate function, which will take care of all our respawn, and we will do this as a coroutine. So let's go ahead and underneath player def, type in our enumerator and call it player respawn. And we're going to use an enumerator because as we know, we can control when something happens after a certain duration has passed. And we're gonna want two separate things to happen. We're gonna want to one, reset our player, much like we already have been doing, and two, reset all these back to what they were before we called upon player death. Otherwise, our players will not be able to continue. Control active will still be false. Their colliders and child game objects will be disabled. It'll be a complete mess. So we'll have to reset all those back before we call upon reset and set the control active back to true. So let's start with our first yield statement. So let's go ahead and type yield return new wait for seconds and I would say a duration of one and a half seconds should work. That'll be enough time for our player to clear the screen before we can reset everything and respawn. And rather than type everything out again, let's go ahead and copy everything from our player def function and paste it 
underneath. And we're going to get rid of a few things. We don't want to reset control active here, so we can get rid of that. And we also no longer want to add a force, but we do want to revert the gravity scale back to what it was previously. So we're going to just do the opposite of what we did in player death. Is dead will become false, of course, and therefore that will stop our death animation from playing and it will revert back to idle. We want to enable our colliders and child game objects. So these would also become true. There we are, nice and simple. True. And we want to reset the gravity scale back to what it was. My current scale is five on the rigid body of my player. So whatever it is, reset it back to the value you're using. Then after one and a half seconds, and this is all coming to effect, we're gonna type in another yield statement for something else. So let's just copy our yield statement from the top there and paste it just below. And inside, we're gonna give a value of 0 0.1, so 0 0.1 of a second. So once all this has taken place, 0.1 of a second afterwards, we are going to return control to the player. So control active is true. And of course, call upon the GM dot reset to reposition and reset our character. Now, all we have to do is call upon our player respawn enumerator in player def. So at the end, let's say start coroutine then in the brackets, the name, player, respawn, and there we go. So when we hit an enemy now, we lose a life, our death animation will play, and it will be one and a half seconds before we return back and reset. But for our player death function to take place, we of course have to call upon it whenever we hit a spike or an enemy. So let's go up to our on trigger enter 2D. Let's eliminate... Reset and game over. We don't need those now. They are their own functions, but we still want to take a life and then we can call upon our player death function. Happy days. Now, upon game over, we won't see our player death function nor the respawn because when we die and a life hits zero, the player game object becomes inactive. It gets disabled and immediately brings up the game over screen. We're going to change how that operates in the lives manager. So save our code and let's go to the lives manager. And all we're going to do here in the lives manager is delay when the gm.gameover takes place. And of course, that's going to be once our player death has played out its duration. Let's copy that line of code, then delete it. And let's write our start coroutine first. We can then create the coroutine afterwards. And we're gonna call it Q game over, just like so. Then underneath, let's create that coroutine. So we're gonna call it I enumerator, Q game over. There we go. And let's create our yield statement, which will be yield return new, wait for seconds. And we can have that match the duration of the player def, which will be 1.5F. There we go. And then of course, once that is done, bring up the game over function. And that's all we have to do. So let's save all that now and head back into Unity. And once we're back, let's select the player. Then we will change the collision detection in the rigid body 2D from discrete to continuous to give us much sharper, cleaner collisions. Then we can scroll down to player controller and we can see we have our child objects array but it doesn't have a size at the minute. Change that to two, and it will create two slots for our child game objects. Go ahead and drag the ground checker into one and the stomper into another. Then we can also select our shock force. I'm gonna go with a value of seven any higher, and I think it might be a bit too much. And while we're here, let's also just tidy up the colliders on our player. I'm gonna shorten it so he can't bang his head on anything. And I'll also just shorten the width of the stomper as well, just a tiny little bit. And I will double check the enemies. I think we could bring the collider from the feet up a little tiny bit, just like so. Let's do the same on red. There we go. 
And once that has done, let's save the scene, hit play and test. And now if we go over to the enemy and get hit, ba -ba -do -ba -do, there we are. Little death animation plays and we respawn just as planned. Now let's test our last life. Ba -ba -do -ba -do. And there we go, game over. That works beautifully. Now let's head back into Unity and let's create a prefab of our player. So drag your player to the prefabs folder. For all we need to do now is update our scenes with our newly created player prefab, which ties in nicely with a query I know many of you have had with regards to a more convenient way to update your scenes. We can open other scenes in the hierarchy as scene additives rather than open and work through each individual scene one by one. First, let's save the current scene, then close it down in the hierarchy. Select any scene you'd like, I'm gonna go with level one, right click and select open scene additive. It will load that scene alongside our current in the hierarchy. You may notice if you double click the camera to zoom out, the contents of both scenes overlap each other. Not to worry, we can unload the scene we don't want to edit by selecting the drop down in the corner and choose unload scene. So we've now unloaded the previous scene we're working on and we can now edit our current new scene. And we of course now want to replace our old player game object with our new player prefab. So let's delete the player in this scene, go to prefabs, and drag in our player prefab. Now, because we deleted the old game object, we will have to reassign some variables in the game manager and player controller script in the inspector. For example, there is no game manager component anymore. So drag the game manager into the slot there. And in the game manager, it's looking for a missing player controller. We'll just reconnect that with the new player game object. And there we go. Of course, I only made the changes to the one scene as an additive in our hierarchy. You could, and you can, have all your scenes open as scene additives, and all you would have to do is make the same changes I just did to the other scenes, reconnecting the missing variable. Select in the drop-down, remove scene. And it's as quick and easy as that, rather than I will demonstrate for you once again the changes you have to make to your scenes as these will have to be applied to all of them. And all we're gonna do is delete the old player game object, replace it with the player prefab. You will have to reposition it in world space, so that's not a problem. And then reconnect the missing variables, the game manager in the player controller script, and in the game manager, the player to the missing player controller. Save that scene, and that's all you have to do. Then. If you want to have one scene open again, I'm just going to unload my old scene and remove a scene I don't want. And I'm back to a single scene. And that will be all for this half of part 16, guys. Please stick around for the second half where we will fix a collision issue that causes us to lose two lives instead of one when we hit enemies or spikes, as well as cover more of your requests, such as making your enemies bulkier with a hit flash. Thank you very much for watching guys and please don't be afraid to get in touch with us should you require any assistance. I'm more than happy to help you. Have fun, all the best, and I will see you shortly.